Today we're going to be going through a, a distal deep IT band reconstruction and ALL reconstruction combined. For this deep IT band slash ALL reconstruction, we're going to use three double loaded knotless fiber tacks that are knee fiber tacks specifically. They're shorter for ease of insertion. We can tap them in and drill them in as well. The tap we're going to use proximally just around our ACL so we don't have to worry about our tunnel. Distally, we're going to drill because the tibia can have some hard bone for insertion. We're going to use two 0.9 millimeter suture tape fiber loops distally for our graft passage and also for pulling and tensioning our graft. Then also a new fiber stair that comes on a stick that helps with insertion and with passing. So now we're with our specimen to show you this technique today. And this technique is additional to our ACL reconstruction. My tunnel drilling, I use a flip cutter with an outside-in technique, so I've drawn what typically is my normal incision for that surgery. With that surgery, I use my finger just to do a nice soft tissue elevation of the skin so I can feel the IT band, and I'll have about a similar sized IT band incision there. For the addition of this deep IT band ALL reconstruction, I need just a little bit more. Uh, one nice element of using these fiber tacks is that we don't need a larger dissection in terms of attaching it. And my landmark is the distal Kaplan's fibers, which is about right here, and we'll illustrate that later. Distally on the tibia, you can use Gertie's tubercle as well as the fibula as your landmarks. So this is the fibular spot. The anterior border of it is here. Gertie's tubercle is here. Uh, one nice area that is very reproducible is where this champagne glass drop-off is right here where the muscles are all starting. So I can put my thumb very reproducibly on that spot and I typically need about a three centimeter incision right in the middle of that spot. I'll put one knotless fiber tack at this location and that will be recreating my deep IT band reconstruction and another one here and I'm going to use a double bundled graft which gives me essentially a reconstruction of both of those elements, the deep IT band as well as the ALL. So now we're going to get started, and I like to start proximally because as I transition from my ACL reconstruction to this technique, this incision's already made, so my eyes are just naturally drawn to it first. But you could start just as much distally. There's no necessary steps that are important. For these steps, I typically prepare proximally, place a knotless fiber tack, attach my graft here, then go distally, place my two knotless fiber tacks, then pass my graft, and then secure distally. So we've now, we were using that mobile window to see the IT band. Now we've got this Army Navy lifting up on the IT band and this Sinrake holding on our most inferior or posterior IT band. And you can see the actual distal Kaplan's fibers right where my finger is. So I usually find it with my finger or that location first. And then you can see it in this specimen as well. Since we're reconstructing and we're going to do an onlay, we want to make a bleeding bed of bone. So you can use a rasp or you can use a curette to just mark up that spot and get some nice synovial slash periosteal abrasion because we want a nice bleeding bed of bone. In addition to using a rasp, you could use a rongeur. We've got a rongeur here. And now you can't see it as nicely because I've started to disrupt it. Make a nice bleeding bed. Once you've got your bleeding bed of bone, then we're going to come in with our drill guide. All the way down on the bone. Then we're going to tap.
And now we'll go ahead and get our graft and load our graft into this position. So we've removed the inserter and you'll see that we've got two loops and with those two loops is what we're going to pass our graft from and there's a stay suture to help protect you so that you don't pull prematurely. Now we've got just a, a hemostat and we're going to pass our graft and what I'm going to do is just get it halfway. So right where it is doubled over and I will remove our stay suture and now we can just zip this down to the bone with these two knotless mechanisms. And it's simple and needs little exposure and we're secure approximately. So now we've got our graft, we're going to go distal. Alright, so now we're going to move distally to our, our tibia and Gertie's tubercle, anterior border of the fibula. And this soft spot right here where the muscles begin, the flat spot right above them is where I want to be. And I'm going to make an incision at that location. We've got a really nice footprint to use. You can see Gertie's is right here that we've just pulled to. Anterior border of the fibula is behind us. And you can see the IT band right at this location. Hold that one right there. So I'm going to put a knotless fiber tack essentially right behind Gertie's. So here's Gertie's. Now, that flat spot is a, a large area, and I can always go back and re-reference myself with where the muscles begin. So for this second anchor, we're more posterior, about halfway to the anterior fibula. We're going to use the drill guide and drill through the drill guide. The tibia can be hard in this area and placing the anchor. And now we've got one anchor that will reconstitute our ALL portion of the reconstruction and another anchor that will reconstruct the deep IT band portion of our reconstruction. We also can see the IT band here. So we've got an incision through our IT band and we're going to use this hemostat up underneath the IT band. And come out right adjacent to where we were before. I do widen just a little bit and then come back and make a tunnel for our graph to come through and then repeat and we'll use that fiber snare to pass. This fiber snare has a wax portion of it which just opens up a lot of different avenues if you wanted to even just pass the tube as opposed to passing it with this hemostat that would be a, an option as well. Today we're going to use it to pull down through and then pass our graft. So we've got the loop to pull our suture tapes down and our graft should follow nicely. There we go. So now we've got our graft into position and we're going to simply secure it to the tibia, one limb for our ALL and one limb for our deep IT band. We've got our stay suture again to help keep our loops. So I'm going to get some provisional tension in this graft and we want to put the knee at about 15 degrees of flexion for that. We can do a secondary tension once we get our other one and then go back and forth. So now we repeat the same steps. Don't need the stay suture now that we got the hemostat in place. So we'll get rid of the stay suture.
I can guide it with my hemostat. So now we've got both limbs. Put it at about 15 degrees based upon a biomechanical study. And now go ahead and pull each limb down. You'll see the, the tape pulls nicely down and is flat. The other thing I like about the double loaded limbs is we've got enough pull out strength here that previously I would take this and over sew it back over. But with the two loops, I'm confident that we don't need to over sew because of the pull out strength is increased with the two loops. Now we'll repeat for our other graft. So we got it laid down nice and flat and I can pull my tension and visit the first one, getting the slack and the tension, and then visit the second, getting the tension. So I'm pulling tension and at the same time then securing. And then we can also go back and revisit these limbs if we feel like we need to. Use a digital test to see our graphs down to the bone in there. So in addition to the two cerclage sutures that the anchor provides, we have these limbs. And if we have continued concern, we could use a free needle and pass them through the graft to provide additional hold in our graft tissue.